Hey guys, welcome to Isaiah's Reviews, and today we'll be reviewing the Zhiyun Smooth 4. Uh, this is a three axis gimbal for your cell phone, and this is the, it comes in a form fitting box, but this is inside the box, and it's like a uh, dense foam, kind of cooler looking material, but it feels pleasurable to the touch, oddly. And uh, you open this guy up, and inside, ooh, smells good, but you get the pretty large three axis gimbal there and you get the little tripod that screws in the bottom which can also be used as a kind of a hand grip and there's also a spot there for a charging cable which I have taken out because I've used this thing for about a week or more to get familiar with it and it takes that amount of time honestly but first let me show you oh before I forget you do get about uh, 11 hours battery life 11 to 12 hours depending they say 12 I say 11 and uh yeah like i said the little tripod which is plastic uh and works oddly enough really well but now let's install my phone without a case because you can't have a case on this guy unless it's a like a really thin one but if you're trying to protect your phone like like me this is the old one i had on here it doesn't work and that's like a mid-size one it's not like a tough tough armor one so it's probably not gonna work and before we get to that point, the gimbal itself actually locks into position like this. And that's fabulous. Like, uh, you have no idea. I've owned like a dozen, um, at least a dozen gimbals in my time. And having this lock, this means I can throw this in my messenger bag or something like that. And, it, and it's just simple. See this little, little uh, piece right there? It goes inside this little catch right there and it just snaps right into place so it doesn't move all around and get all nuts in your bag. But the install is super simple. You just uh, put the bottom of your phone where the charging port would be up against this and uh, just kind of press up and it snaps right into its groove. Press it all the way against the side. This is the important part uh, that you see that it's not kind of even there. If you look around the back side, the best way to judge this is you want equal amounts of this uh, little bars to show here. So you just push on one side or the other and this will center it in. And another thing you want to do is move this weight right here. You unscrew this, you move this left to right to balance your phone. And once you have it balanced, it should stay exactly where you put it without the thing being on. Okay, now that we've got the phone installed, we've got it positioned and centered into this thing to where it doesn't really have to do anything to keep it stable because you want the motors to not work hardly any, except for whenever you're moving around to keep it stable. But as far as fighting a off center of gravity, you don't want that to happen because you could end up with some jerkiness sometimes in your footage. I've seen that in people's video footage so far and I know that it hasn't been balanced correctly. And, uh, uh, it also helps the battery last a long time too, and for you to not to burn your gimbal up, which can't happen. Okay, so now we're going to fire this thing up. Now there's no removable battery, so it's internal. Um, you just hold the power button down like so, and she's alive. Look at that. One thing to note is you cannot turn this 360 degrees. There is a stopping point to it. Now there is a ton of physical buttons on this thing, which means you're not pushing on the screen and causing this to move and you can get quick access and I love that. There's nothing worse than having to fiddle with uh, stuff on the screen that's supposed to work correctly but doesn't and to be able to have as many physical buttons as possible is great and this has as many physical buttons as you could probably put on a gimbal. It's the most I've ever seen which is a really great thing and on the back there's even two buttons, two clicky buttons here, and then also a wheel, and we're getting into all this stuff right now. First thing worth noting is it's USB type C. Hallelujah, finally, USB type C. Most phones are that on the Android side, and having little devices like this, little chargers, little things gravitating over to USB type C is a blessing, so thank you. All right, so we got the power button, like I said, it's got the battery indicator here in blue lighting, uh, so you do get one, two, three, four lights in here, so 25% increments. And you've got the PF and L position follow is, is selected. 
So it will follow uh, left and right positioning while keeping the camera maintained in a straight position, which is normally kind of the, the way you'll walk around. And if you want to go to lock the position, it's going to just lock dead ahead. No matter what I do, it's just going to lock straight. And a cool thing is you can position this thing. You can take it and turn it like that and keep its position. So it'll keep a lock, like if you're looking up at a building, I would do this while you're driving around it or walking around to give this, you know, awesome view of like movement while something's steadfast in the background, which is nice. But to get out of this, you just uh, double click the bottom. You got two clickers here and one on the bottom. You just double click that and it'll go right back to its position. We'll move out of this locking position mode here to get back to normal kind of normalcy. So when I hold down this lower one in the back, it, it follows no matter where I go, it's following me. And I can double click it on the bottom there and it'll reset uh, the up and down positioning. And uh, another common position is flashlight mode, right? So say I wanna go into flashlight mode like so, you can kind of just tilt it down and run around in this area. But what if I follow it down, it's locked into position and I wanna go straight to, I wanna reset this back to flashlight. All I do is point it out like a flashlight, double click the bottom and it goes, it realizes it's in flashlight mode. And the cool thing is I can lock position while I'm in flashlight mode and walk around. So let's talk about flashlight mode right quick and why this is a good, important mode to be in. So now I'm in flashlight mode, right? I'm extending my arm out to video and by doing that, it's like a shock absorber. Like I'm able to absorb a lot of movements while this is just naturally positioned out in front of me and all this is absorbing that. And it's different than this. See, it's bouncing around a lot more because I'm trying to look and let it running or something like that. Try flashlight mode. All of a sudden it kind of steadies a little bit better. Go back, bobbing up and down more. Not so much. All right, another cool mode is that you can put this in as like fast tracking mode or fast action movement mode is what I kind of call it, I guess, but it's the top clicker. If you hold it down once, right? See, this is normal speed. If I hold it down, boom, it's turned into mega fast. And wherever I go with holding it down, that's where the camera's gonna go. And this is fast. I thought this was so cool to be able to catch like quick moving objects. Boom, 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 boom. But look at that. My camera's pointed up because it follows my hand movements no matter where I go, right? So double click the bottom to reset. And there it's reset. But this is a cool thing. Whenever you double click the top one to put it into that kind of sport mode. Okay, now the camera's gonna stay straight out. It's not gonna follow up and down anymore. It's just gonna really stick with me going left or right, but it's gonna keep, so whenever I'm running around doing some shots, I would probably wanna hold it in that position, right? Because it's following everywhere I'm going a lot faster than what it, a normal gimbal would do. That alone, that, that feature right there alone, I, that's what had me falling in love with this because I've owned over half a dozen uh, phone gimbals in the past. I own uh, at least three uh, camera, professional camera, camera gimbals now. So being able to have this feature with just a double click and I can release and go back or one click. Say I wanna look up one click, one, one click to look up. Now I wanna double click the top, boom. It's, it's fast, it's staying straight ahead. Pop, drop, popping and locking. Double click, oh, keep in position. But after one week of just solid use for this thing, it just becomes second nature to hold the button. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, let's go ahead and install this because I forgot to. Screws right on the bottom, which you can screw this to a tripod if you wanted to, the gimbal, or this guy right here, which adds extra length, right? And it's pretty steady. So if I want to like do a booming effect, I can boom this out and you can extend this farther with a pole if you want to, but look how far we're extending uh, our little booming motion. And whenever you're on the go on the run, 
Sometimes you don't have room in your bag for a pole. Fell into that situation plenty of times. So now we're gonna dive into the app itself since we've exhausted everything that you can possibly do with this gimbal without using their app. And before I forget to, you can do this in portrait mode, you can use this in portrait mode, but do, do people really use a gimbal for portrait mode? I really wanna know. I've never seen anybody running around with their phone in portrait mode with a gimbal. I just don't ever see and see that being a thing. So once we go into the ZY Play app, we hit connect to device to connect to, to your gimbal. And if you have an issue, I've gotten into a habit of just toggling my Bluetooth on and off. Like I have a, a Segway, which I just did a review on, to be able to get into that app. If I haven't used it in a while, I have to toggle the Bluetooth on and off because I have a watch and other things I connect to. And for some reason, it just loses its brain on finding devices uh, my phone does anyway and I just it helps before I go into something I just know I'm just going to toggle that Bluetooth on and off and then go into the app and normally that has solved a lot of my problems with connecting to devices I've already toggled so we'll connect so let's talk about the buttons down here and controlling the application itself since we're in there uh, you got record which will record video and this will take a photo and it works see that take a photo Push this for record. It started the recording process, which I'll cancel that. And uh, this can turn on, you see the blue, it says change to autofocus, but I can use this wheel to pull the focus. If I select this again, it says change to zoom in in and out, which I can zoom in and out with the wheel. It's jerky. I think I've noticed on the iPhones that there, this is Android LG V20, by the way. This zooming here is not that smooth so maybe they can iron that out through updates or something i don't know if it has to do with permissions permissives for the phone to access the camera or what i don't know what's going on with it but anyway you can toggle things through through this little crosshairs button there uh we've got menu display we'll cover display right quick and this shows kind of everything that we're actively in now or the actual settings and it'll change as we turn so we can see the iso and white balance and things like that change. Push display again to get that to go away. I'll push this menu button up top and we can cycle through now. This wheel will turn and we can cycle through that way or we can just physically just push left, right, up or down or turn that wheel, either one works. Uh, going to camera, you got default, 180 degree pano, uh, three by three pano, slow-mo, time-lapse, uh, Mo time lapse and vertigo. Vertigo is in those suspense thriller movies whenever that camera is kind of leeching in a little bit on their face, but the background is just pulling away or pulling forward or whatever. That's that has to do with the focus and moving the camera in and out, and that's what's pulling or pushing that background to give that uh, tense feeling. So we'll uh, hit the menu button to go back again. We have flash, which we can activate through the middle, which is really cool because it's kind of like a flashlight mode. You can just open this or turn it to auto or steady light. You have those options, which are great, but you can just push this alone whenever you're in video or have the gimbal itself just pan around without even recording. You can just push this lightning bolt button in the middle and your camera light on the back will, will just come on. So I like that, that's nice. Uh, menu to go back again. We have the timer, but you can set that up if you wanted to and HDR mode, which I can turn that on if I wanted to, and I just did. Auto white balance, uh, we can change all that stuff. So let's see, you got uh, incandescent, fluorescent, sunny, and cloudy. I would definitely play around with that because <clears throat> if you're editing on your phone and stuff too, you're editing software on your phone for your vi completed video, maybe uh, uh, not as good as being able to nail that down in real life. So just play with your, uh, white balance that's important uh, menu to go back um, we'll go let's see menu go back into menu here we go resolution options so we got uh, 720 1080 and this has to do with permissions too for the phone I think uh, about whether or not this works so it may work with some Android phones it may not I'm hearing that in the world but this seems to be uh, working with me right now uh, I would like some higher frame rates for slow motion, but uh, we do have that slow mode mode up there, so we can do that through the slow-mo mode. Uh, 
and let me hit 4k uh, let's see manual I am in manual on uh, scene so is motion or walking so I'm gonna leave that in walking we have the actual physical settings themselves um, general settings the name of the unit the device model and the version of the software so we'll go back up to camera and here's the panoramic stop time so you can manually have this go in panoramic if you wanted to digital stabilization if you have that would be turned or on or off here one of the worst things you could do on a gimbal is is crop in while you're moving because it just adds more uh, jarring to the video to the finished product uh, you got your grid lines here uh, that you can change grid diagonal center point I always go grid rule of thirds camera mode is in pro you want to keep it that way I'm not even gonna mess with the other mode because it's ridiculous and yeah that's that's kind of it and the problem I have which I can't figure out right now which is just software simple software related things I think is once I hit menu to go back out I can't get out of this where it wants to, where I can manually adjust these things right here on the fly so what I have to do is push take a picture and it brings me back out to this so that's something a little silly thing that they can get to in firmware and I think hopefully it will be addressed. And if you're vlogging or something like that and you want to change the camera to, to forward facing, uh, you can click left and uh, voila, here I am peeping and creeping. And we'll take that back out there. Now I have two lenses on the back, one's wide and one's regular. Uh, this only toggles from my face uh, back to my primary camera on the back. It doesn't go to the wide one through their app. But if I wanted to use it, I could just go over to my own personal app. You don't have to use their app, but uh, you don't get all these fun little toys to play with, like this thing. With all your standard gimbal control movements that you're used to with a, a smartphone being on board, all the extra buttons, uh, some of those through navigation and things like that work, but the actual uh, implementing of some of the extra cool things like this focus wheel and the zoom wheel. I don't know if you can see that, but it jerks to zoom in and out. So using that while videoing uh, uh, would not be useful. Uh, maybe they can do something to smooth that footage out through firmware updates. That would be a plus. Another cool thing that I didn't get to try that I wanted to try was the vertigo mode. I couldn't really get that down because of the jerking zooming, so that kind of eliminates the vertigo mode. Um, so take these into consideration. These are things that you might have to omit until they can get this figured out through the firmware, uh, which I believe would be coming down the pipeline. Surely they would not avoid some of the main features uh, for Android users, because apparently this works great on iPhones. So if you have an iPhone, you're not going to have the problems that I'm having. But like I said, the uh, the the uh, the uh, zooming is jerky. Uh, the focus pulling works great going out into focus, but coming back in sometimes it hangs up, doesn't want to come back. So I just have to toggle this, and and then finally get it to to, to seem to work correctly. Uh, that's a little annoying. Another thing that's a little frustrating is you can manually move that. By the way, um, is the targeting like I can select that. And supposedly I can drag a spot out to target, and, but it says object targeting failed. No matter what I do, it won't uh, focus on anything. And then another weird thing is it kind of, do in the process of doing that, let me get out of that. In the process of doing that, it, it locks the gimbal into uh, position lock mode, and it won't get out of the position lock. Even toggling won't do it, so I have to turn it off. So that's the glitches that I've been able to find in, in this unit. So for 139, do I recommend this? Um, I would recommend this for iPhone users because apparently that's not an issue from what I gather online. But for Android users, for 139, you know, all these extra buttons, like if they work, like I waited. Uh, a couple weeks or whatever wanting to do a review wanting the firmware to exist or happen because I knew I was like I'm gonna drop this review and they're gonna do a firmware update and it's gonna fix all these problems so basically I'm showing you 
what it's supposed to do and what the problems are and in the comments section down below in the description whenever they change this through firmware I will change that and say it's fixed it's a go if you're an Android user it's a go tear it up go get it enjoy it because I do think it would be the best smartphone gimbal on the market for Android users iPhone users yeah if this worked as smooth as what I'm seeing online that thing's a, a purchase I mean that's a no-brainer for but I, they've got to be able to fix this for Android okay and once they do and and you can utilize that tracking that object tracking would, would be really sweet I, I, I think the focus pulling and the zooming of this wheel for me the focusing part might be creative to kind of pull focus from an, something to have it stationary and just pull it for some kind of cinematic effect and then bring up the vertigo I, I'll never use uh, the zooming I'll never use unless they come out with a new phone which has optical zooming uh, then maybe that'll be like a two times one time two time but it's optical not digital uh, then I might use it but uh, uh, the tracking and all that the software it all comes down to right here if they fix this then yes buy this for Android it's, it's better than the DJI Osmo 2 but uh, DJI Osmo 2 just has the, the software part nailed down right now so Ji Yoon uh, if you get this together, if you get the firmware together, highly, highly recommend this. So make sure to explode on that subscribe button and ding that bell so you get notified on the next really cool tech item that I have. I've really got a lot in store. I've got a, a, a pile of things over here. I've got a lot more electronic ride-on uh, things that are really neat that are powerful coming, especially in August. I'm excited about August. That's all I can say. So yeah. Whoa! One thing I forgot to mention and it almost blew my mind and that was, I don't know why I did not mention this, but uh, the one problem that you'll have, okay, they fix the firmware. The Android iPhones, they're fine. They work great together. No issues with this. Can you go without this one thing? The joystick in the middle. Now normally for the joysticks, I set this down on a tripod and I may have a landscape or something and I kind of ease it to the right. I've, I've, I've already adjusted the speed of the gimbal down as low as possible. I'm sweeping, I'm panning right up at an angle if the joysticks allow me to do that on gimbals, which I love having that option of not only going left, right, up or down, but also at angles. So I'm, I'm doing this motion, it's smooth. I'm not relying on my jerky hands to do it smooth and slow. Can you live without that? That's, I can't believe I forgot to mention that. Okay, for real this time, see ya.